Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. Hello, 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 all you Total Bosses out there, and welcome to another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. I am your host, Christiana Green, and I'm a shadow healer and life coach for gay men, helping gay men to create the lives that they want by healing from the past and growing and transforming into the versions of themselves that they truly want to be as well. So this week on the podcast, I am going to talk about a topic that I share a lot with my clients, something that's inside the program. So I'm going to give you some, you know, open the door and give you some access to some stuff that I share often with my clients that I think is really beneficial to them. And I thought, why not share it with the rest of the world? Because I think it's an important topic for us to have um, as well. And that, that, that topic is inner saboteurs. Now, if you're someone who's watched RuPaul's Drag Race, you know that RuPaul often talks about the inner saboteur, the voices in your head that, you know, that hold you back, that's that from your greatness, that stop you from moving forward. Um, maybe, you know, you'll hear some thoughts in your head. Maybe you'll hear those, those words in your head that really stop you from, like I said, achieving what you want in any area of your life, whether that's putting yourself out there, being more confident, finding a relationship, having a better career, you know, improving your financial situation, whatever it is, there's always going to be an inner saboteur that's in our head that starts telling us. And the truth is that there are 10 different inner saboteurs that we all have in our head. And I thought it was important for us to have a topic today so I can share with you the understanding of those 10 different inner saboteurs so you can get to understand them on a deeper level. Now, what I want you to do while I go through the process of sharing about these inner saboteurs is I want you to come through the lens of where in my life am I relating to hearing that inner saboteur? Where have I allowed that inner saboteur to block me or to stop me from actually achieving what I want or having what I want in my own life as well? So as I go through this, really start to do this because what I'm going to say to you all is that you're going to realize at some point that you have had every single one of these inner saboteur probably hold you back from something at some point in your life. But you're probably going to realize that there are two or three of these inner saboteurs that you can relate to that are probably going on right now. And they're the real kickers in the pants that are stopping you and blocking you from getting what you want. So let's have a, a, let's, let's get dive into it. You take a note uh, for yourself. Like I said, note down these things, and then we'll have a little uh, Q&A at the end where you can ask me some questions as well. So the first one is the, uh, you know, the comparison, Charlie. I'm going to name them all as well and give them a person so we can understand because they are a persona as well. Now, this saboteur loves to make us feel less than by comparing ourselves to others. We might be comparing our bodies to someone else. We might be comparing our bank accounts to someone else. We might be comparing our careers, our relationships, or there are lack thereof, of, right? And what happens when, you know, we compare ourselves to other people, we start to feel inferior or inadequacy. So let's talk about the scenario for Charlie. So Charlie's going to be scrolling his Instagram, right? Scrolling down, down, down. And he comes across a gay influencer with an absolutely perfect physique. Now, this is oftentimes going to trigger feelings of inadequacy about your own body image. And what happens then? We might lead that to feeling not good enough, not worthy enough. And that may be, um, I can't have what I want in my life. Whatever the story happens, because there's always going to be a story that you have and the beliefs that are going to be tied to those stories. So oftentimes, like I said, it might be that I'm not good enough, I'm inadequate, I can't have what I want, whatever it is like that, yeah? And so because of that, it can often lead to us taking certain actions or inactions. We might decide that I'm feeling sorry for myself, so I need to change that. So I'm going to numb myself from these feelings of inadequacy by drinking heavily by having instant gratification, maybe doing drugs, maybe it's eating food and and that's not good for me, right? Or whatever it is. Or it could be the opposite where you you push yourself to the extreme to try to match and and mirror that physique. I need to, I need to, I'm only going to eat this amount of calories and I'm going to work out 
to four hours a day so that I can get to that place as well. And, and you kind of starve your body of what it really needs because you're trying to compare yourself to this person and then trying to compete with that person as well. So what can we do to kind of turn around the situation um, and, and overcome this in this episode? So what I would say for Comparison Charlie is that we would reframe thoughts. So, you know, when Comparison Charlie starts, you know, whispering in your ear, challenge those negative self-comparisons by focusing on your unique qualities and your accomplishments and your successes and the good things about you, you know, within you as well. Remember, Instagram, social media often portrays idealized versions of reality. And you are so much more than just a picture or a post. So remember that you are so much more than a picture or a post. So if you want to get away and get out of, you know, a comparison, Charlie, whispering in your year, start reframing the thoughts that are there because that's going to be a great way for you to move past that as well. So the next one is perfectionist Pete. Now, perfectionist Pete is always seeking flawless results, perfect results, and Pete fears being judged for anything less than being perfect. You know what, you know, you probably all can relate to being perfectionism in some way, or maybe in a lot of ways in your, in your life, right? For, for a lot of gay men, being a perfectionist is quite a common thing because as we grow up, uh, you know, growing up uh, as a young gay man, especially in the closet, hearing all the things that society has to say about gay men, you start to realize that maybe it's not safe for me to be who I am. And in order for me to feel accepted or seen in another way, I start to become perfect. I become the perfect student, the perfect son, the perfect friend, the perfect sports person, whatever it is that you are working towards, you do everything to the extreme. And that's a common thing that happens to so many gay men out there as well, and, and, and queer people as well. Anyone who feels less than and, and, and hidden for who they are, they, they, they strive for perfection as in some way. So maybe you, you, you need to have the perfect partner, you have the perfect body, the perfect, you know, career, you know, and, and what happens is we find that we're never satisfied. There's always something that we see wrong because in reality, we all know that perfection is unobtainable, right? So, you know, you might realize that Pete, perfectionist Pete, obsesses over every detail of their appearance and their behavior before attending something like a gay pride event, a gay party, and worried that, you know, he's not going to fit in or be accepted by others. So what do we need to do to be able to overcome that chattering here of the perfectionist Pete in our head? What we really need to start focusing on is embracing our imperfections, embracing our flaws. Now, if you're someone who can relate to perfectionist Pete, instead of striving for those impossible standards of perfection that we can't live up to, embrace your imperfections, embrace your flaws, and recognize that they make you beautifully human. Accepting yourself as you are opens the door to self-love and self-compassion and grace. And you'll start to see yourself for who you really are. And that's an imperfectly perfect human. We are all, you know, we all have flaws. We all have imperfections. And when we can accept those things, it doesn't say that I don't, I can't improve those things or I don't want to improve those things. It's about saying, yes, this is a flaw of mine. Do I want to work on it? Yes, but I don't have to do it in the sense to be perfect so that I can then, you know, feel loved or feel accepted or feel compassion or empathy for who I am and my experience, right? You can do that by being vulnerable as well. So that's a great way for understanding that. It's like embracing your perfect imperfections and allowing yourself to be vulnerable, to know that, yes, I am not perfect and it is okay to not be perfect as well. So let's jump into the next one. And this one is what we call approval seeking Andy. Now this inner saboteur constantly craves external validation. So this is often at the cost of your own happiness, right? Who can put their hand up and relate to looking for acceptance and approval from others, even at times when it's cost you your own happiness? I know I can do that. I have many, many, many experiences of my life where I was, you know, a people pleaser or an approval seeker, where I was looking for other people to approve of me. Because if they saw me uh, or liked me for this version that I was trying to put across, then that meant that I could like me as well on, on some level. Even though, you know, deep down there was still that self-hatred, self-loathing, self because I grew up knowing 
that me being gay, there was something wrong with that. That was how I felt, right? And that's how many gay men feel. And until I actually addressed those issues and really worked on it, that was when the self-love came. It was never from getting approval from others. It might have given me a dopamine hit, a, a high, but it never gave me what I was truly looking for. And that was self-love and happiness in my own life. So you might look at it like this, approval seeking Andy, you know, is going to be hiding his true interests and passions, you know, especially when chatting with gay friends or going on dates, right? And the reason why he's doing this is because he fears they might not approve or find him interesting enough. And so he has to follow to the pack or the peers around him and do whatever they do. And there might be some things that are unhealthy for him. Like for me, when I came out and I jumped into the world of the gay scene, because I had no friends before here, I just started following what everyone else did. That was drinking heavily. That was partying four or five times a week. That was taking drugs, you know, abusing drugs to the point where, like I said, I ended up in hospital six times. I think a lot of you know some of my story, but I went to hospital six times. And it was all because I was trying to fit in. And I was trying to, again, also numb some of the pain that I was dealing with, some of the trauma, because I wasn't ready to face it. So, you know, a lot of this stuff can lead to some unhealthy behaviors, wherever it comes to sex, you know, not saying no, because you don't want to, to be seen as this person who, who, who isn't just in sex or isn't, you know, promiscuous, right? Because that's what a lot of people say the gay community does. So you, you try to fit in, you do some things that aren't as healthy as that as well. So if we want to work through this in this saboteur and we try to help work on the approval seeking ending, the people pleasing, something you need to focus on is practicing self-acceptance. So embracing your true self and recognizing that your worth isn't determined by others' opinions. Find the courage to be authentic and you'll attract genuine connections that appreciate you for who you truly are. And that's something that's so important, being appreciated for who you are. And that starts by you appreciating you for who you are. And I said, like I said, it's not an easy, as easy as just saying that. I wish that like that was the case because, you know, that would have saved me years and years of heartache and pain and trauma. <laughs> but you know, when you learn that and you actually start focusing on it, something I, 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 I suggest is a really good tool is to actually go into the bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror. And instead of saying, oh, look at that old bitch over there, look at the wrinkles here, look at the, the bags under the eyes, you just look at yourself and deep stare deeply into your eyes and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. And do it you know, five, six, 10, 15, 20 times and start to realize that you'll start to slowly, you know, get out of the, the uncomfortability of doing it because it feels weird uh, at first. But the more you do it, the more you realize that you are lovable. And when you can love yourself, you start to see things around you changing as well. And you stop needing to seek approval from everybody else. So let's move on to the next uh, inner saboteur. And this one is fearful Freddy. So Freddie plays it safe, avoiding risks to protect us from, you know, potential hurt or rejection. And we all know as gay men, trying to avoid rejection becomes a, you know, an Olympic sport for some of us, right? I know for myself so much and so many of the clients that I work with, rejection is a huge trigger for you. It's a huge negative emotion that has a lot of negative charge. And of course, it's going to be that way for so many of us coming up, growing up in a world that didn't accept us, our coming out journey, you know, we had fears of rejection for, for years for some of us, even decades, right? I've had clients who've come out in their 60s, right? So fearing rejection for, for decades, what does that tool have on, on you as a, as, a, as a human being, right? As a person, what trauma does that hold into your nervous system, in your body, right? So this is a huge one for us. And so as you come out, you realize you might get rejected and you have probably been rejected by certain people and that can really cause some emotional scars there. Right. But also what does it do? It will affect you from, you know, actually going out and maybe pushing yourself in your career, maybe starting a business. Maybe it stops you from going on dates, asking people out, having the kind of relationship that you want, you know, asking for more money in your, in, in, in your career, because You've, you, you know, you've, you know that you've worked hard, but you're afraid of the rejection of them saying no, so you don't do it, right? That pain of 
that you have of the fear of rejection blocks us so much from so many things in our entire life. So Fearful Freddy, you might realize that he's going to hesitate to express romantic feelings to a guy that he likes, fearing rejection, and then worrying that his sexuality could be a deal breaker, right? For, 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 for anyone. And so that couldn't, can, can, can be a big thing as well. So again, realizing that these things really play a part on who we are and our toll and fearful Freddy whispers in our ears and tries to stop us, stop us from taking action, stop us from moving forward because that fear of rejection can really cause, like I said, some emotional scars. And if you have yet to deal with those things, now one of the things that I work on with so many of my clients is actually clearing out the negative charge and the negative emotions that we store in our body from those traumatic experiences, from those scars, right? And when we can get rid of, you know, the, you know, the, the, the emotions related to rejection and anger and sadness and fear and shame and guilt and, you know, inferiority or whatever it is, when we clear those out, we start to see things differently and we start to be able to take action. I know that's happened for me. I know that's happened for so many of my actual clients being able to do that. I've had people who, uh, you know, were dealing with this and they were addicted to meth for, for, for 10 years to now getting up and they've been three years clean. Now they have a relationship that they've never had. Now that they're going and studying something that they've wanted to study their whole life, but because they were so caught up in, the, in, in, in drugs and everything and the fear of rejection, they, they, they're now doing that, right? Because they've overcome those things. So that's really cool to be able to see the, the, the differences and being able to have that. So what's something that you could try that's going to help you in being able to get over those that set in a saboteur, fearful fretting? And one of those would be, stepping outside your comfort zone. And I know that's so easier said than done, but listen to me here for a second. Overcoming fear requires you to take small steps outside your comfort zone. So approach that guy that you're interested in. Attend one of those, you know, gay events that you've been always dreaming of going to. And remember that courage and vulnerability can truly lead to meaningful connections. So don't let your fears hold you back. Now, if you need some help with that, you know where I am. You can message me in the DMs. I know so many of you do reach out to me and I'm blessed to have that, but that's, that's simple as that. You can reach out to me and I'm sure I can support you with what you're going on for if you really want to get rid of some of this negative charge that that, that you're holding on to as well. This one is, what's the next inner saboteur that we all have and we all deal with? And again, I've, I was talking this a little bit before, but this is people pleasing Paul. This is a bit even further than this, the, the approval seeking one. Have you ever worried about disappointing others. You know, people pleasing Paul bends over backwards to avoid conflict. So this was this one's even deeper because it's avoiding any conflict, right? Now, what do we mean by avoiding conflict, right? Because if you're a people pleaser, right, you may have people walking all over you and crossing all of your boundaries, but because you're a people pleaser, you're not enforcing any of those boundaries. So you feel taken advantage of, but you don't say anything about it. So it's a constant cycle. And so you, because you're afraid of that, you don't make, you don't say anything because you're afraid of the conflict, right? So people pleasing Paul sacrifices his own desires and plans to accommodate maybe his gay friend's preferences, leaving you and him feeling unfulfilled and disconnected from being his authentic self. Who can relate to people pleasing Paul and being disconnected from their authentic self? Like, I mean, I could put all of my hands and toes up and, and realize that was me because I was what I would class as I was a world-class people pleaser. I did everything because I grew up having no friends, right? Growing up in school, I was bullied severely every single day. I had absolutely no friends. And then when after school for the, for the, for the next few three years, all I would do is go to work and come home and hide in my room. I wouldn't even speak to my family because I was just, blah, blah, you know, like I was, I was traumatized. <laughs> I was too afraid of them seeing me and, and then being bullied like I was at, at school for being gay. And someone might've seen it. And then they hate me as well, because that would have really been the bottom of the barrel for me. And I probably would have ended my life because I did contemplate suicide, like so many of us gay men do as well. And so what happens next for me was I decided to, to, to go to a gay club and to see what this gay, gay world was like. And I loved it. And I started making friends and 
and I would be the best friend that anyone could ask for. I had so many amazing friendships there, but it was because I was a people pleaser. I would do everything for them. If someone would say, let's do this, let's do this. I would say, yes, yes, yes. And I would get myself into so much debt. I would literally call in sick for work. I'd do anything to, to be around friendships because that was something that was so important to me because I had none before. So I would cross all of these other things that were, were going on in my life out of the way to please someone and do something. And, you know, that, that, that went on for years and years and years. Um, and probably can relate to that. You're doing things for other people because you just want their approval. You want their acceptance, right? That was something that I had to do. And so for us, if we want to learn how to really overcome people pleasing Paul for good, the way to do that is setting boundaries. And I know, right? The, the, the awkward conversation of setting boundaries, right? Learn to set healthy boundaries and prioritize your needs. Saying no doesn't have to mean rejection. It just means respecting yourself, excuse me, and creating space, fulfilling relationships that are based on mutual respect. Mm, How good is water, by the way? Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, so setting boundaries is so key for us as gay men. And like I said, we Growing up, you don't get like this crash course on communication or conflict resolution or setting boundaries, right? So really starting by really coming, like the, the, the best way I would say for you to start by figuring it out is to, to get clear on what those boundaries are. Do you have boundaries around your time? Do you have boundaries around your money? Do you have boundaries around your relationships with people, Right your career? Like, what is it that's important to you? Start checking out what those values are that you have, because every one of us has a a, a unique set of values in our life. (laughs) And in each area of our life, we have a unique set of values as well. So in our life, we might value relationships, you know, career, we might value friendships, intimate relationship, it might be self care, it might be, you know, emotional, um, you know, mastery, whatever it is, right? And each of those categories, you're going to have a set of values as well, that's important to you in each of those areas. So but what we what I work on with so many of my clients in this area is getting clear on the values that we have. And then when we are clear on the values, do they align to where we're going? If not, we can actually shift and, and, and move those values around. Because when we shift some of those values around and actually get rid of some of the negative charge, because when we're talking about values as well, like let's say I value money. It's so important to me. I there could there could be some negative reasons why I value money and some positive ones, right? So some negative ones be because maybe I grew up, you know, really poor and I, I value money because I like, I never want to be poor again. I never want to be like living homeless on the streets. That could be some negative reasons why I value money. Not They're not necessarily bad reasons, but they're negative reasons because they're coming from a negative place, right? Or it could be that I value money because I want to create a, an amazing life for me and my friends and my family. And, you know, my family gave me everything. I want to give back to them and I want them to enjoy their retirement. You know, you see here, they're all positive reasons for it. So when you're coming from a positive thing and you're moving towards something, you're more likely to achieve it. But if you're moving away from something over here, it sometimes pulls you back. So really working through how I can actually clear out some of this shit so that I'm moving towards something better. Because when I move towards it, I'm so much more likely to achieve it and have that in my life as well. And so when we talk about having the values and having them clear and, and all that stuff, then it's about setting boundaries. Because if my most important thing is, you know, my relationship and then my career, what are the what like what's going to happen here if, you know, I've got a date night here and I've got this project that needs to get finished. What, where's the boundary? So that's what we talk about setting every boundaries is getting clear on that stuff. And the more you get clear on that stuff, the more it's easier for you to set it and enforce it because you are so clear on why it's important to you to have that boundary in your life as well. Let's move on to the next uh, inner saboteur, excuse me. And this one is victim Vincent. So Vincent, victim Vincent, he convinces us that the world is against us, hindering us from taking responsibility for our lives. Now, we all know someone in a life at some point who is just this massive victim, like every, the world's against them. Everyone's done something. They've never done anything wrong, but everyone's out to get them. And, you know, I feel really sorry for those people because they must have gone through a lot to, to get to a place where they feel very in, in that space, you know. Um, and I know I've been a victim at many times, and I know that's in, in the saboteur has come in at, at certain points, right? 
like when I've worked in corporate and I had a team of 300 people and I was having, you know, people coming at me left, right and center, you know, like boom, boom, boom. I felt like I was getting knocked down and like everyone, like what the fuck is going on here? Why is everyone out to get me? Like, why are you adding one more piece of stress into my life? Right. And I would blame everyone else for me feeling stressed. And then I would drink because I was stressed. So I'd be blaming them for me being stressed for me drinking. Right. You see how that works. I'm being a victim to my, 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 my addiction to alcohol at the time. And literally just using them as an excuse while I was doing it, right? The truth is I had to get deep down into realizing that, no, actually I'm choosing to let these things affect me and I'm choosing to cope with that with alcohol, which was unhealthy for me. And when I was able to do that, I was able to free myself and then get clean off out of that addiction. So I no longer deal with that problem anymore, right? So let's talk about this. Victim Vincent, he believes that his career setbacks are due to discrimination in the workplace against gay individuals, which will stop him from taking proactive steps to advancing his career. So you see here, he's feeling discriminated against. So he's no longer going to move forward because he's like, well, if I try, I'm not going to get it anyway. And so that's his story for not trying. The victim, Vincent, is telling you you're being discriminated against. So why try and go for the job? Because they, they're they already out to get you. They are out to get you. So you don't take action in that place. So you probably can understand and, and think about a number of different stories where you played victim at some point. Can't say that you haven't. I'm not going to hear that from anybody because we all have. Like I said, I own it. I own it. I own it. You all need to own it. It's just truth. Just be truthful. This is to yourself, right? So stopping perfect perfectionism as well here. <laughs> okay. So how do we work through and overcome victim Vincent? Simple. We start taking responsibility. And maybe this is radical responsibility for our lives and where we're at. We shift from a victim mindset to taking full responsibility for your life. Focus the aspects that you can control and take proactive steps to create the life that you desire. Regardless of any external circumstances, no matter what happens outside, you cannot control those people. But what you can control is how you respond, you react, and what you decide to do with the information that's coming at you. Of course, people do awful things all the time. We're humans. People make mistakes. Some people do intentionally, right? But if we allow that situation to stop us from achieving our, our goals and our dreams or make any story about what that means to us, we create our victimhood there. So what we need to do is by taking radical responsibility for our life, we take extreme ownership for who we are. And we say, look, you know what? No matter what the setback is, I'm going to achieve that thing because it's something that I want to have in my life. Yeah. So that's how you're going to work through getting over that. And I know it's easier said than done. And this is some, sometimes I have to work with some of my clients for months to really get them to really start taking action. Because again, there's so much beliefs that they hold that are negative towards them. And again, the charge of those emotional things within our, in our body literally can stop us from actually moving forward. Because again, we feel the emotion there of that negativity, that those negative emotions that are going through our body, in our nervous system, right? Who's, we can all understand anxiety, feelings, depression, feelings, Things, you know, those kinds of stuff will come from too much negative emotion stored in your nervous system as well. Let's move on to the next one. This is something that probably everyone here will easily say that I do this because it is overthinking Oliver. Now, overthinking Oliver is always stuck in his thoughts. Oliver analyzes, overanalyzes, and creates unnecessary stress. So this is that really like stressed out version who starts to think of a hundred different versions of how something can go wrong, right? And that then what happens it will stop you from moving forward. So overthinking Oliver is going to hesitate in maybe joining a gay sports club because he's really worried about not being good enough at that sport. Even though he really wants to and he longs to connect with others who share his interests, but he blocks himself because he doesn't think he's good enough. He doesn't think that he's going to be able to play at that level. They're going to start to judge him X, X, Y, Z. So he overthinks every situation to the point where he doesn't do it. And he stops you from doing it as well. Now, this could stop you from, like I said, putting your hand up for a promotion. This could stop you from asking someone out on a date. This could stop you from literally going out there and starting the gym. 
right? Because you start to tell yourself all these stories. And it's a story, a story, story. And as we said before, this is not just necessarily about the story, it's about the belief that leads to the story as well. So whenever people tell me stories about their life, I'm not necessarily worried about all the facts. I'm more about what are the beliefs that are coming on in this story that we need to shift so that if I change this this belief, the story will also change as well. So that's what we really need to focus on there. And so what can we do to really help with the overthinking Oliver? Something simple that I think we could all start and try and be able to do today. Some of you may not want to, but it's a simple one. It's called practicing mindfulness. So you want to calm the overthinking mind through mindfulness. So engaging in activities that are actually going to bring you into the present moment, such as meditation, yoga, or going for a nice walk out in nature and just like observing things, right? Even just sitting in your room and just looking around going, there's a blue book. There is a black thing on the wall. I would have noticed everything that's red. I just look around and you'll start to see, wow, there are more red things in this room than I thought possible. So those are small, simple things that you can do just even in your room right now that can help you to be in the present moment and stop the overthinking. And when you can stop the overthinking, you get to see things a little bit clearer as well. So that's how you can overcome the overthinking Oliver as well. Let's move into the next in a saboteur. This one is called Future Tripping Freddy. Now this inner saboteur pulls us out of the present and it overwhelms us with worries about the future. Now, similar to overthinking, you know, Oliver, this one is about worrying about the future of all the things that could could go wrong, right? But this is a bit more extreme around it here. So future tripping Freddy. They worry excessively about the future, about the future of his relationships, the future of their career. And they start imagining scenarios where it will inevitably end, even though it's currently going well, right? So it's about, this is you going like, I'm in a good situation here. And wow, like if I start to to think about the future, you start to come up with something that could go wrong. And then you block it and maybe you ultimately ruin your situation, right? you know, because you don't want to get hurt. So you can over uh, overthink it, but you start worrying so much about the future that, like I said, you, you block yourself from actually having those things in your life as well. So what do you need to do to be able to get past this? Cultivate some gratitude, right? So combat any of this anxiety and about, you know, the future with gratitude, for the present moment. Be grateful for what you've got right now. So if you're in a good relationship, don't worry about how it could end in six months' time. Be grateful for where you're at because when you're grateful, you're present. And then what you can do if you're grateful, you're going to be a much better partner to your partner. And as if, you know, someone who's coming from a place of gratitude and love and you've got the right person with you, as if you're going to create something that's going to cause shit happening six down, months down the track if you're coming from that place of gratitude, right? You understand that, right? But if you're constantly fearful and worrying and that's the mindset you have, you're probably going to be distant from your partner. He's going to start to go, what the hell's going on? He might overthink. He might start future friggin' tripping as well. And boom, you've got two future trippers and bam, that's headed for disaster town, okay? We don't want to go to disaster town. So take time each day to really appreciate the positive aspects of your life, of your relationship, of your career, right? Fostering a sense of contentment and optimism for your life. This is something that you'll realize is going to make you a healthier and happier version of who you truly are as well. Yeah. Next one that we can talk about is the one that probably will impact you the the most, right? And this is judgmental Jeremy. Now, Jeremy's harsh judgments of ourselves and others lead to feelings of unworthiness right? Now, we all have heard the saying that when you judge someone else, and you point a finger at them, you start to see two fingers coming back at you. Because what we judge in others is often what we're judging in someone else. So we might be judging someone for their weight. We often have a very big judgment around our weight and we're so focused on it, right? Yeah. These are then some things that we have, right? So, you know, you might notice that judgmental Jeremy criticizes fashion choices of other gay men that he encounters at a social event, at a party, and using judgment as a way to feel superior and mask his own insecurities about the way that he looks. 
right? Because oftentimes we can easily jump into using external things such as fashion and hair and all these things to try to mask the insecurities that we do have. But our judgments that we have of other people, we really need to take a look at those. Because again, a confident person doesn't judge someone um, at all. They focus on themselves. But an insecure person does spend time judging other people because they're trying to mask their own insecurities as well. So you've got to really be aware of that. When you, If you're a judgmental person, bitch, you need to look at you, honey, not anybody else, right? And I know this because I can I can vouch for being a judge, judgy bitch in the past, right? 100%, I'm going to put my hands up for that. And I still deal with some judgments here, right? I'm not perfect. I don't have no judgments at all. That's We're all human. I just make sure that I'm aware, try to be as aware of them as possible. So I can go, where does that come from? What, what insecurity that I need to work on next, right? Because I'm constantly trying to work on things. I'm constantly trying to grow, constantly trying to improve in every aspect of my life. Not all at the same time, of course, but I'm constantly trying to improve because I don't want to be those way. And I know that this is a reflection of me. So I say, look, hey, if I'm judging someone here, I can look at me as well. What do I need to work on here? Here, 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 here. Yeah. So what way can you do that, right? Practice empathy. So replace any judgment you have on someone else with some empathy towards them. Recognize that everyone in life has their own journey, their own struggles, and their own triumphs as well. So be kind to others and yourself. You know, because empathy opens the door to meaningful connections with other people. Let me say that again. Empathy opens the door to meaningful connections with other people. And so you might realize that some of the people that you're judging, if you come some with some empathy, you can create a, a, an amazing friendship or even more, right? You never know what you're looking for or what could be there for you as well, yeah? So just be open to that. Now, the final inner saboteur that I want to talk about is abandonment Alex. Now, Abandonment Alex has a fear of rejection and abandonment. And Alex builds walls up to protect his heart. As gay men, we've all been hurt. And I'm sure you can probably all relate to putting up a wall in front of you to stop letting people in so you do not get hurt. I have done this many, many times. That's why I, you know, it took me till, till I was 35 to get in my first real relationship because I was so protective of myself. I had walls up around myself for sure. 100%. I was fearful of being abandoned and rejected uh, on a deep level, a deep, 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 deep level. A lot of deep work had to be done to get those walls to break down, right? So abandonment Alex avoids starting a serious relationship, aka what I was just saying, believing that all gay men will eventually leave him, resulting in a self-fulfilling prophecy of emotional detachment, right? So he created what he feared the most because of that 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 um, abandonment theory. Like, I'm not going to let you in because you're going to leave me. So that means I'm going to be lonely and I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. <laughs> Don't even give anything a try, right? Because of those abandonment fears as well. So what do we need to do to get past that? We need to embrace vulnerability. Embracing vulnerability and opening yourself up to the possibility of meaningful relationships and acknowledge that vulnerability is a true strength as it allows for deep emotional connections with others. It allows us for deep emotional connections with others. That was the biggest lesson I had to learn on this journey as well, that like being vulnerable is actually a strength, not a weakness. And I thought for so many years that I was taught, as men, we got taught to be emotionless a lot of the time. We can't cry. So vulnerability and and being emotional was a weakness. It was a bad thing. But we need to break that barrier down. And I know it's definitely come a a long way over the years, but we still have a long way to go. So think about that if that's you as well. So those are the 10 inner saboteurs that we have. We've got Comparison Charlie. We've got Perfectionist Pete. We've got Approval Seeking Andy. We've got People Pleasing Paul. We've got Victim Vincent, Overthinking Oliver, Future Tripping Freddy, Judgmental Jeremy, and then Abandonment Alex as well. So those are the ones that we, like I said, are like have in our head. So like I said, as I asked you, I wanted you to take note, which one do you relate to and how have you really realized that all of these ones have played a part in your life as well? And which are the two or three that are really holding you back 
from having a, a relationship or a better relationship, having a better career, maybe starting a business, improving your 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 relationship with your family. Um, what could it do about your your wealth and your health? Right? If you're constantly focused on everyone else, are you not spending time focusing on who you are? Right? And I trust that you now have some tools or some understandings of what you can put into place immediately to start seeing some difference. And of course, if you need some help with that, then of course, you know where to reach out. I also have my 21 Day Gay Man's Guide to Love and Happiness online course that literally deals with every single one of these uh, you know, in a tools and how we can move past it and do some of that deep emotional work that we need to do to become the best version of ourselves. So if you're someone who's interested in maybe finding a bit more about that, I'm going to link that below. Simple, plain and simple. If you want that, have a look. If you want to contact me for some additional help, that's up to you as well, of course. But otherwise, again, you've got questions, you've got some stories, you've got some, you know, comments to share on today's podcast, or even about a topic you want me to talk about in the future. Maybe you want to go into deeper detail for any of these um, in this tours, then you can reach out to me across all social medias or comment below. And I'll always get back to all the comments that you guys send me as well. All right, guys, I'm going to be back next week with a brand new episode of the Total Boss podcast. But um, until now, until then, always remember that you've got this and I've got you. Bye for now.